Yeah, very good morning also from my side. Uh, thank you, Tom, for the introduction. Um, I would like to give you, ladies and gentlemen, now an overview of uh, how the context broker works, how it is positioned, and uh, giving you a few examples of um, how it works. Um, the, the context broker is handling context information. Uh, context information describing what's happening around us, here in the example of the city of Munich, how the city is feeling, so what is going on, where, when, and why. That uh, we all very often see that this information are organized in silos, in uh, data silos, because APIs are not um, open or available, data models don't fit to each other, or organizations and companies are not keen to in um, sharing data because they are not um, sure whether this data are handled uh, safely and whether they maintain their sovereignty on their data. The mission of the context broker is to break down this data silos and to make data available for smart solutions in the context of smart cities to be able to increase the quality of life of citizens in the city and on the other hand to reduce the cost of operating a city. And I would like to give you now uh, two examples of um, uh, ways how the context broker is used. And the context broker is always in the heart of a context information-based platform and solution. And as I mentioned before, it breaks down um, this uh, information silos. Here in, on the, in the picture on the right, uh, you can see the context broker in the center of such an uh, architecture and uh, at the bottom we have common interfaces. Um, these interfaces are in the meantime standardized. This is called NGSI, Next Generation Service Interface, um, standardized by ETSI, which is a European standardization organization and uh, it is the standard for context information management in smart cities. Published on January 24th of this year, so um, roughly a month ago. And then on top of this platform, we see a lot of um, uh, functionalities to create smart solutions, uh, as I said, to increase the quality of life of people and to reduce the operating cost within a city. Um, as next, and now I have to Go to the next page. Put someone. Ah, I will uh, immediately uh, move to um, a live demo I plan to share with you. And at least for this, you have to give me the right to share my screen um, because I don't have it at the moment. So, this is the technical moment of truth. So, we just uh, bear with us, dear, dear listeners. Okay, if it uh, doesn't work, uh, we can use the slides. So if you go there's back... Been a, um, Ulrich, there's been a slight delay on the slides, so I'd give it just a second to see, and uh, okay. if necessary, we can use the slides. Because even, yeah. even um, transferring slides has had a slight delay. Mm -hmm. I think privilege discussion... But I think we can uh, use simply the slides. If you share the slides again. Okay, we'll do that. Okay, perfect. Um, this would be the first one from the city of Vienna. And if you go into the presentation mode, thank you. Um, you can find this um, solution uh, on the web. It's available for everyone um, under smartdata.wien, which is uh, Vienna on, in uh, German. Um, and uh, this um, platform provides three different areas of open data to the citizens and to the companies and organizations within the city of Vienna. Uh, you see it on the left, uh, first uh, geo-information, 
So uh, there is a map-based services where you can have access to information coming from d many different um, uh, origins, from transportation, from education, from tourism, uh, from uh, environment, uh, and so on. The second part is real-time data. Um, so information uh, about what is happening actually um, in my city. And the third one is um, even an improved real-time information um, providing you access to live cameras in the city. And uh, we can see on the next page and maybe you have to help me to um, click to the next page, please, because uh, I took over control, but it doesn't work. Uh, I click again, and hopefully it works. Yes. So, go to the next page, please. There it is. Um, here is a first example of the geo information. Uh, so uh, in this uh, case, you see, I'll go, maybe my control works again. I'll go one slide back. You see um, on this map um, different uh, information. In that case, uh, information where are ambulances and hospitals. So uh, these are uh, clicked and there are far more than 100 different layers of information from uh, grouped into categories uh, starting in mobility and transportation, in education, environment, health, uh, security, energy, um, and so on. So far more than 100 different sources of um, information, uh, geo-based information, so you can see in this case, uh, which is uh, clicked here, where ambulances and hospitals are in the city of Vienna. These are uh, information which are um, static. And uh, on the next page, we see um, real-time networks. Um, for example, um, real-time data from air quality sensors, information on uh, energy consumption in buildings or information on um, transportation, be it uh, car sharing, bike sharing, or um, public transportation, uh, for example. And I will show you also an uh, example of uh, this slide, uh, which you can see here on the next. So the same um, map-based service again, but uh, here you can see now the position of different buses um, in the city. And uh, in the live system, this um, information is refreshed every two seconds. So you can see the real time location of the bus. You can see how fast the bus is moving, um, just as an example of uh, real time information provided in this uh, platform of the city of Vienna. And the third area is providing information from um, live cameras um, and you can again um, click on different cameras you see the uh, the list of cameras on the left side and um, this uh, cameras can be uh, put together by yourself into um, dashboards uh, as you can see it and I have to go uh, one slide back um, uh, and this live um, pictures and uh, cameras uh, can be used by everyone in the city of Vienna or with data from the city of Vienna, but it can be used by everyone. So everybody has access to this information. That is um, a simple example of uh, the city of Vienna using the context broker to get access to um, information coming from many, many different sources, from sensors deployed in the IoT networks, from other IT systems, from cameras, and provided to the citizens and also companies and organizations. And a second um, example is um, an example from the city of uh, Eindhoven. Um, 
where uh, there is this is the mayor of um, Eindhoven. So we have uh, a bit uh, remote uh, monitor or um, control problems here. Um, the um, this is the mayor of um, Eindhoven, and Eindhoven in general is a safe city, but there is one street, it is uh, the Strassenfeind, um, just a kilometer long, uh, 55 bars, 20,000 visitors, and in the past, a lot of incidents, a high crime rate, a lot of alcohol, and the question was, can technology help me to reduce the number of incidents? And what they did in the city is that in a first step they used the street lights and installed cameras on the street lights, um, which we could see on the next page if it comes, uh, doing monitoring of the moving patterns of the people. Um, it is not face recognition, so no personalized data but analyzing how the people are moving. The second information source which is gathered by the contact broker is sound analytics. Again, not speech recognition, so no personalized data, but the kind of sound. How loud is it? Uh, is it aggressive sound? And then the third information which is used here is social media analytics. Um, so what's actually posted in Twitter, in Facebook, with relation to this street? And by combining these three different context information, so information what's describing, uh, information describing what's happening in this city, now, where, and uh, try, trying to find out where, why, and in combination with historical data, the system is able to predict uh, the system is able to predict um, critical situations in the street and um, so it is not able to identify critical situations but it is able to predict critical situations so um, uh, a critical situation which will come up in two or three minutes within the city and uh, on the next page, we can see that the right information is now provided um, to the um, police officer who is um, sitting in the control room of the city. And this police officer is now able to either send proactively police people to the, this location in the street or to increase the light level in the street, uh, in this part of the street. And in more than 80% of the cases, it is more than sufficient to increase the light to de-escalate an upcoming critical situation. And it is proven that the crime rate in the street has been reduced by more than 50%, that the police uh, resources are focused where they um, where they are needed, that the bars and the business owners have lower repair and clean up costs due to um, uh, a much lower crime rate, uh, much less uh, transportation to hospital and uh, medical resources are needed, and in general the image of the street and the image of the city has been increased. So. Um, Another example how the context broker helps to get different context information onto a platform and to use this information for smart services to increase the quality of life of people and to re reduce the cost of operations um, in a city. These were uh, two examples of uh, how the context broker is used. There are uh, more than 100 others uh, in the meantime far more than uh, 100 cities, not only from Europe, but also in the meantime outside of Europe, are using context broker-based solutions uh, to create their smart cities. 
Um, that's it from my side, and with this, uh, back to you, Tom, for the moderation of the uh, remaining parts. Thank you very much, uh, Ulrich. So we're going to have um, a quick Q&A session for Carl and Ulrich before we move on to the final um, section. So, uh, Carl, the first one is for you. Uh, and the question is, if it is about citizens, principle one, then perhaps citizen, citizens should be mentioned in your Maslow equivalent. Plus, the relative importance of not uh, mentioning citizens at the top of the pyramid, i.e. the smallest part, does not suggest their paramount importance. Uh, all right, so <laughs> thank you for that. Just to clear the air then, uh, when it comes to this, without citizens or residents uh, or people, nothing will ever happen. Uh, that's really the basic building block of any ecosystem. And in order to actually reach network effects with anything like uh, set building blocks or fire solutions, you need people who benefit and people who do things for the right reasons. And in fact, it's also the first sentence in our manifesto, which is, we love our cities and the people who make them great. Uh, so it's definitely there uh, and will simply improve the, uh, the image uh, until next uh, webinar. So thank you for that. You. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Carl. Um, the next question is for Ulrich. I mean, you touched on it, but um, are these live camera feeds GDPR compliant, so the General Data Protection Regulation? Um, yes, they are, um, as they are using what's called edge technology. So um, within the camera, there is a functionality to pixel the faces. So you are not able to identify which person is there, and uh, therefore we are not, uh, or the system is not using any personalized data. As I said, uh, it is just analyzing how the people are moving, and uh, there is no identification of a single person, and therefore this solution is uh, GDPR compliant. Uh, 